successful. Number one, far beyond anything else. And he goes, and these Fortune 500 companies were willing to pay hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, to learn and understand what this one thing was. So how would you like if I told you what that one thing was? Now, if you heard me say this before, don't, don't tell them what it is. But for the new people, any guesses? What do you think the one thing is to make a business successful? The one thing you can do, implement. The one thing that is the major characteristic traits of making your business a success. One word. Urgency. Passion. Sense of urgency. Grit. Look, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I heard him say that, he had my attention. I wanted to know what he was telling Fortune 500 company executives, entire executive teams, what the one thing was. These are people who are, you know, very well educated, good business earning, background, stuff like that. And then he says, he goes, you would think all of these things. He goes, well, the truth of the matter is, when you really boil it down to basic communicative skills and what it takes to become successful, because the answer might surprise you, but the one thing is that's necessary to become the most successful. successful person in business and in your business. And it applies to our isogenics business. If you want to have the most successful isogenics business in the world, I would encourage you to apply this one simple thing that any of you can apply. You want to know what it is? Yes, sir. Yes. Achievers, very competitive. You know, people that like to take the gritty and take strategies and stuff. And he said, This is the one thing that makes businesses ultra successful. And he goes, You don't see it, you don't understand it, but you know, the people who are successful, you'll watch their lives, and if you go in there consciously, intentionally looking for it, it's, you'll see it abundantly. And so when you're dealing with isogenics, dealing with the spirit of love all the time, when you're connecting with people, emit that. It's so important. Make sure that's the first thing that comes out of you. Because love can be portrayed in many different ways, but I will tell you the most successful interpersonal communicative skills will tell you that 95% of all communication is done non-verbally. Non-verbally. So here we're concerned about what to say on social media, what to say in the phone, what to say in the post, and he's telling us, no, most of it is done non-verbally. And so if that is true, and let's assume it is true, because I certainly believe it is true, I think it's important for us to figure out how to capture these non-verbal communicative skills. And so let's start with the very basics. Something that's really, really basic. I want you to finish a phrase. Because if we're looking for nonverbal cues, we've got to know what to look for, right? Right? To finish this phrase, the eyes are the windows to a person's soul. And so the eyes are the windows to a person's soul, and if you're attempting to do communicative skills or connect with people, why are you looking at the ground? Why are you looking in the air like you don't know or... Why not look directly into the eyes of people? So here's what I want you to do on your piece of paper. Simple exercise, but I think you'll remember for the rest of your lives. I want you to draw a face, just a round circle face. That's a face, believe it or not. All right? Got it? Now I want you to draw another face. Then I want you to draw another face. I need a runner with a microphone. So, what differentiates these three faces if they were drawn digitally, electronically, perfectly the same? The answer is nothing. They're all the same, aren't they? So, if the eyes are the windows to a person's soul, what are we looking for? Eyes. So let's make some eyes. Eyes, eyes, let's assume all these eyes are the same. All these eyes are the same. All these eyes are the same. All these eyes. What differentiates these three faces? Nothing. Nothing. Still. And we're looking at the eyes. And he said the eyes are the person's soul. We're looking at three sets of eyes. We can't tell the difference. What is he talking about? 
Because some, a lot of times you've got to take other things into consideration, not just looking into the eyes. So let's look at other things that they may be portraying. So if you see a person with a mouth, and the mouth is like this. <laughs> Meet a person, a stranger, you look at them, and that's kind of their state of being. Who has the microphone? But maybe we can do it without a microphone. What's one word? One. One word. Hold on. Raise your hand, because you can't just call these out. One word that describes that face. Cool. Indifferent. Confused. Neutral. Neutral. Apathetic. Apathetic. Unapproachable. Unapproachable. Cold. Cold. Yeah. Disengaged. Disengaged. Miserable. Miserable. Miserable? That? Whoa. Wait till we get to the other faces. <laughs> Stoic. Close. All of these are the same. All of these are correct. Why? Because perceptions in the eye of the beholder. Right? What you perceive to be, that's the way it is. If you perceive that person to be any of those things, that's the way they are according to you. And a lot of those words are definitely accurate. But here's something I noticed about this face. This person is in a state of mind where they seem to be disengaged with a good one, but they don't seem to be in the here and now. They seem to be thinking about something, maybe something that happened in the past, perhaps something that's about to happen in the future, but they're certainly not in the here and now, so they're certainly not available. So if you say anything to these people, you might startle them because they're not expecting to be spoken to. You follow me? So when you connect, you've got to kind of increase the odds in your favor. If you go out and connect with every single person you bump into, the next 100 people, chances are many of them can fall into that category and your odds are going to go down because you're just startling them. They're not thinking about anything in the present. And so, watch this. Let's draw the second face. Same mouth, right? Nothing really separates these two people, right? But they have little distinctive things going on. What are one word, what's one word that can categorize that face? Angry. Sad. Disappointed? Broken? Angry. Angry. Angry's a great one. I happen to look at that person, and I think either sad or angry. Do you know if you go up and say anything to these people, they might go, wow! Ah! I don't want to talk, can't you tell? Can't you see my frown? Can't you see I'm miserable? So that might not be a person to engage in, especially if you don't like rejection. And I'm speeding things up. But, I think you're going to get the point. So the third face, ready? Same, starts off the same, right? But, slight little differences. A little bit opposite of this one, right? What one word would you describe this person to be? Approachable, happy, engaged, positive, open. Open. This person, it seems like this person's in a good state, right? And so if you talk to a person in a good state, chances are they're going to be at least open to a conversation or at least open to engaging with you if they like you, if you're exhibiting some of the same characteristic traits. Make sense? So the key is, number one, when it comes to connecting, you've got to identify the people that are best to connect with. All day long, I would take people in this category over this one and this one, all day long. When you see these smiling faces, you know what's interesting about this? Before I drew the mouths, you all said, they're all the same. But now when you look at the mouths incorporated with everything else, even the eyes tend to look different. And they were the same before there were any mouths, right? Yeah. I mean, you, it, it's, it's a psychological thing. So you increase the odds by determining who to connect with. Got it? Yeah. Next thing. Now that you know who to connect with, the heck do you say to connect with them? Hi. What do you say to connect with people? And I'll tell you what to say because everybody is the same. A couple things. Number one, we were all taught, and this transcends all cultural boundaries, geographical boundaries, we're globally. We were all taught since we were little kids. When somebody asks you a question, you answer it. I remember being told harshly by somebody in my family, pow, with a slap on the head. Because I was just one of those kids. Somebody asked me a question. Pow! Somebody asked me a question. Answer it. Okay. 
any answer. So it's coming out. And then I want, you know, it's classical conditioning. And I've lost up. I don't want to get slapped in the head anymore. Somebody asked me a question, I'm going to answer it. Everybody knows that. So the question becomes, if everybody knows that asking a question is going to stimulate the reticulating activator in the brain, there's something in your subconscious mind where you don't have to be told, but when you're asked a question, your subconscious, I'll use layman's terms, there's a light, a, 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 a emergency light, Yellow, red, whatever. That goes off into your brain. Whoop, whoop, whoop. You're being asked a question. Answer it. Who gets left in the head? That's deep inside of the brain. Right? However you've been taught. So the emergency light goes off when you're asked a question. So everybody is trained, exposed to, to answer questions when they're asked questions. Where did that come from? Did you hear something? Yeah. Yes. Somebody. I hear it. Was that a stage? Did you guys not hear that? It's that little voice. It's that little voice in the back of my head saying, Harry, flip up. Harry, up. It's starting to get hot up here all of a sudden. So. So your brain is conditioned to answer questions. Everybody's conditioned. This is on a subconscious level. So people don't even have to think about this. They're programmed to do this. So the question becomes, when you identify these people to connect with, can you increase your odds of having a good connection? And the answer is absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt. The second thing is, can you ask them a question that will cause them to engage the answer is absolutely beyond a shadow of doubt. What well, question? How about a question that about 100% of the population on the face of the planet is asked on a daily basis and is non threatening? And the question is, hi, how are you? Believe it or not, that simple question can activate that reticulating activator in the subconscious mind. Hi, how are you? Ever have it happen to you? Total stranger? In the supermarket? Walmart? Tower yet? Wherever Laura goes, Laura Stephen goes shopping at Target or whatever, for that person's new line to come out. She's going to run into faces. Hi, how are you? Depending upon who you say, hi, how are you, to, you're going to get a different response. Right? Back to this pad for a second. So, you say, hi, how are you, to this person. You're going to go, oh, 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 oh. I'm okay. Right? You're going to expect anything more from them? No. No? They answer the question because they've been conditioned to answer the question out of uh, politeness, respect. You said, hi, how are you? Now I'm throwing the question. You startle them out of their thought process, the drama going on in their head. They politely answer the question. I'm fine. They might even say, thank you. I'm fine. Thank you. What happens then? It's what, you, it's what we call... You being done, you're done. The conversation's over. Why? They didn't ask you a question back to allow you to continue to engage in the conversation, to invite you to continue to engage. They answered your question because you asked the question. They've been trained to do that. But they didn't ask you a question back, which means, look, I'm gonna ask you a question, but I really don't wanna talk to you. I'm too busy thinking about other things. You ask this person, how, 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 how are you? You know what they're gonna do? What do you care? question back. None of your business! Or something that could hurt your feelings. And so you're better off just walking past this person, don't you think? Yeah. That's what I do. I see a face like this, I'm like, I'm not saying anything, that person. But when I see a face like this, that's smiling, and I always say they have smiling eyes. Certain people have smiling eyes. You can tell that they're good people just by looking in their eyes. Attaching a smile on their face. A lot of times they don't even have to smile on their face because their eyes are already smiling. If you say to a person like this, hi, how are you? You know what they might say to you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? <gasps> and then you become aware, huh? They're opening up the door to allow me to continue to connect. That's what's going to happen in your brain.
after today? <gasps> they answer the question. <gasps> am I going to take his strategy and use it? <gasps> or am I just going <gasps> to say, I'm fine, thank you, and end it myself? <laughs> this is where it becomes real. This is where connecting becomes real. Because what you do from that point on, when you found the right person and you said a question, it's going to be non-threatening to them. Hi, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? What you say next will determine whether you're going to connect with isogenics. So here's my advice. Ready for it? Continue to ask questions. What? Continue to ask questions? He said, hi. I said, hi, how are you? And the person said, fine, thank you. How are you? How do you continue to ask a question? How about like this? Make up any question you want. Here's my favorite. Here's my go-to questions. My go-to questions in response to response. Of, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? My go-to questions are, I'm fantastic. Can you believe I lost two inches off of my waist without dieting in two weeks? Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Let's dissect that for a second. Number one, can you believe? I just activated the reticulating activator in their subconscious mind. They were asked a question. They're going to want to respond. I gave them my testimonial. I lost two inches off of my waist without dieting in two weeks. I solidified boom, the confusion happening in their brain by asking them another question. Isn't that amazing? You guys getting this? So right now, there's massive confusion happening in the brain. Their alarm is going, whoop, 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 they ask a question. Matter of fact, he asked me two questions. What the heck was this two lunches off this way? How do I answer that? And the answers might be something like, well, that's great for you. Done. Or the answer might be, what? How did you do that? Or the answer might be, really? Help me to do that. I need to have that done. This is how we connect. Guys, this information was not, this is a collaborative thought process made by some of the most brilliant minds in isogenics at the time we strategized to figure this out. Some of those, you were a part of that. Some of the most brilliant minds. And we took it to a point of really understanding, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Psychology, psychological thought patterns and brought it down to layman's terms where everybody can understand this process. Because if you can understand that, you'll go out there and look for smiling faces, and you'll say, hi, how are you? And you'll see most of them will say back to you, fine, thank you, how are you? Or they might say, I'm fine, thank you. And if they really don't want to engage with you, you're waiting for that second, how are you? And they don't say it. And you're like, oh shoot, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, have a nice day. And walk away and go next. Last week, no, two weeks ago, we went over this on our, on our training course. The next week, I said, we're going to recap it, and we ended it. And I asked for some feedback of some people who had um, some experiences with this. And one person said, it was incredible. I went out, and I spoke to a person. I found a smiley face. I said, hi, how are you, to the smiling face. And the smiling face said back to me, I'm fine, thank you. And she knew, she goes, I knew I was done, but in the past I would walk away rejected because the person didn't want to engage. Now I walked away understanding what was going on in the thought processes in that person's mind, and I was looking for the next smiling face to say, hi, how are you? Isn't that amazing? I think that's amazing. And if you understand that, I believe your level of connecting with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, belly to belly, is going to go through the roof. It really is going to go through the roof. And um, Laura said something really interesting. She said, social media is great. Nothing replaces belly to belly. I love belly to belly. Why? I want to see the person. I want to see the reactions. I want to see how they you know, you know, interface with other people. I want to see if they're happy people, smiling. If they're you know, willing to engage with, with people. I want to see if they're the type of people who are going to listen and then ask the question, answer the questions, or are they going to be the type of people that are just going to talk, 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 when it comes to connecting. Because when you have those people, and they start to realize that what we have is for real, and the products speak for themselves, and our company has been validated, our company has been validated 15 years, $5 billion in cumulative sales, 
in 15 years, that's huge. Closing in on 300 people who made a million dollars, that's huge in this industry, huge. So that validation is there. Validation has been performed with product. There are many people who have lost so many pounds. Our 100 pound club continues to grow. And our presentations that Patty and I do, our overviews, we always use before and after pictures. Because the, at the end of the day, that's what the people walk away remembering. They're not gonna remember a lot, of, a lot of the information, but I guarantee you, they're gonna remember the before and after pictures. Because they're gonna say, I don't know about all that, but hey, I'm gonna try that product and see how it works for me. That's what everybody comes back to. That's what you want people to say. And then when they're engaged and they're using the product and they start to figure out that the products work and some people are gonna to start to figure out that there's an opportunity here because now they're following you on social media. You met them belly to belly, you friended them on a social media platform, they're following your every move on social media and they're starting to recognize that you're professing that there's an opportunity here for people to change their lives, not only physiologically, but financially as well. They're going to, going to start to inquire about how the money is made. How the money is made. Patty and I are big advocates, and we're like a voice crying out in the wilderness that we hate multi-level marketing because they pay on levels in generations. We have conversations with very successful people in multi-level marketing companies. And you know, initially, they don't like the information. It's hard for them to swallow because they're emotionally attached with the companies that they're involved with. But we're just planting a seed. I told you yesterday that I've been prospecting with this very successful person in a network marketing company now for, I think, four years. Four years I've been prospecting the same person. Matter of fact, this past week I said, you know what? I'm going into an event. I said, how's everything going? Are you ready? I don't know if you're open right now to look at something else that can make your life better, be easier, and a lot more fun, better culture. And I said, you know, it is a stab in the dark. You may be totally content with making what you make, but I guarantee you, working together, we can double your income within 24 months. I don't care if they're making $50,000 a month. Guarantee this person we can double their income within 24 months. I'm that confident with what we have, with the right people. And she goes, no, I'm good. Everything's fine. Got the companies international expanded. I said, look, I understand that. I said, but if you don't mind, you know I've been dripping on you now for four years. <laughs> Not for four weeks, right. or four months, four years. I said, if and when the time comes right. when you're open to investigating something else, can you promise me a phone call? Right. Because our timetables might not hit each other, you know, overlap, they might overlap a little bit, right. and I don't want you to be seduced or solicited into another multi-level marketing <laughs> environment. She said, absolutely, I will give you a call. When she gives me a call, I'm gonna go over a lot of compensation plan differences because there's so many that she's unwilling to look at or I have told her, but she's unwilling to face the reality of how they pan out. And so to help us explain some of the differences in the compensation plan, I want you to help me welcome to the stage